What's going on everybody, Ethan here. And today we're gonna to be talking about backed veneer and how to apply it to a surface like this. Now, the preferred method for attaching veneer to surfaces is a vacuum press or a hot or cold veneer press using white or yellow glue. You can even use peel and stick veneer. But for today, we're gonna to be using contact cement that you can get at any local hardware store. Veneer is shipped rolled in a box, like you see here. When you unbox it, you wanna let the veneer rest in the same environment that you're gonna install it in for at least 48 hours before you use it. This will prevent sudden changes in humidity that creates fast contractions or expansions of the wood that could result in cracking. There are so many amazing veneers out there that you can use for your projects, so be sure to check out oakwoodveneer.com to see the full selection available. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to apply veneer to a curved surface like this and also a flat surface like this. What you use under your veneer matters. MDF, or medium density fiberboard, is the most stable, followed by industrial particle board or veneer core plywood. The least stable is hardwood, so try not to use that when you're working with veneers. Now you're gonna to want to avoid pieces like this. You can see that there's holes that aren't filled, there's paint, there's scratches, there's dirt. If you want to use a piece like this, definitely sand it before you use it or else the veneer is gonna show all of these holes and imperfections and it's not gonna look good as a finished piece. Not all contact cement is the same. You're gonna to wanna to look for contact cement with the highest level of solids and follow the manufacturer's instructions. Unfortunately, flammable contact cement often works better than non-flammable. It comes in a can and also in spray bottles. When using contact cement, I would recommend putting on gloves to protect your hands. A tip for this if you're working in cold weather environments is never put it directly on the floor. Once it gets very, very cold or freezes, it doesn't work as well. So make sure you keep it in the appropriate temperatures that it says for your specific contact cement. There are a couple different ways to apply contact cement, a brush, a roller, or a trowel. Read the instructions on any contact cement that you're using to make sure you're using the right tool. Stir the contact cement before each use. The solids and the solvents must be mixed thoroughly to form the best bond. For your substrate, two coats of adhesive must be applied. Make sure your piece is fully dry to the touch before applying your second coat. Dry contact cement will be a little bit sticky and have a little bit of a gloss to it. But always make sure to read your specific contact cement's instructions to get the best results. When you cut your veneer pieces, make sure they're a little bit bigger on all dimensions than the piece that you're gonna be putting it on. Because you don't wanna have any spaces that it doesn't cover when you lay it down. Only one coat of adhesive is needed on the veneer backer. All glue applications should be completely dry before applying the veneer. Rushing any of these steps can lead to a bad bond or possibly bubbling after. So make sure you follow all instructions and take your time when applying the veneer and letting it dry. Always use maximum pressure when smoothing out the veneer. There are a lot of different things you can use like a flexible wood scraper or a piece of scrap wood or a carpet tucker. If you're using a scrap piece of wood, make sure you sand all the edges. You don't wanna have anything sharp when you're pressing out your veneer. Rollers like this are great for a lot of things, but for veneer, you wanna avoid them because they don't give you the proper pressure. For this project, I'm gonna be using both the carpet tucker and a scrap piece of wood, so you can see how they both work.
Once your veneer is all in place and looking good like this, make sure you give it the proper drying time before you take the edges off just to make sure you don't have any parts that pull up. When you take the edges off, you can use a router with a flush bit, you can use a blade, you can use a card scraper. Any technique that works best for you works best for your veneer. Now that all your pieces are trimmed up and looking good, make sure you wait 24 hours before applying the finish. I know it's a waiting game for veneer, but you want to make sure everything's perfect so you don't mess anything up for your finished product. And there we go. Two ways to apply veneer, to a curved surface and a flat surface. Stay tuned for a lot more of these videos where I'm going to be showing veneer in all types of applications. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below and be sure to check out oakwoodveneer.com for all your veneer needs. I'm Ethan, see you next time.